So we're now down at 14 Holborn Road, right here at Auto Channel, the home of all your best cars for the cheapest possible price. And as you know, they have all of these nice things that you used to switch, pits, boxes, all of that. But they also have something that's a little bit more um, peppy. That's right. Suzuki Swift Sport. Buy Suzuki Sports. Complete with all the extra body kits in the world. Now, just like Rallyard is the tuning company for Mitsubishi, where they tune the cars and give them more performance, better horsepower, better looks, Suzuki Sport does the same thing for Suzuki. In that, as you can see, we have carbon fiber body panels right throughout for weight reduction as well as for aerodynamics. Because this is carbon fiber, this is carbon fiber, that's carbon fiber. All in all, reducing the weight by roughly about 40, 40 kilograms max. Then you go on to other things. Well, these wheels are not the Suzuki Sports wheels, these are other wheels. But you also get this rear body kit, which is fantastic. You get the side body kit, which is fantastic. You get a more aggressive kit at the front. So, let's start with the more fun things. Now the Suzuki Swiss Sport has the same 1.6 engine that you get in your regular Swiss Sport. But unlike the regular engines, as you can see, there's a lot of work done to it. Now, come here. Let me show you something. All of this is carbon fiber. All of this is Suzuki Sport fitted with just badges everywhere and new stuff everywhere. And I mean, this engine that used to produce only 125 horsepower and the other one now produces 160 brake horsepower. Now, to put that into perspective, that's a lot of horsepower for this little car because I mean this car weighs just over a ton and an Evo gives you about 200, 240 brake horsepower per ton. Something like that. This is giving you almost 160 brake horsepower per ton. That's ridiculous. That means that this is a very quick car. Now, on top of being quick, it's also very light and it handles very well. The reason for that handling It has lighter panels at the top to put more of the central you know, weight in the middle. So the center of gravity is lower. They also have the wider body arches right around. They also have the flatter tires that keep you on the road. But look at this body kit. Let's talk about it. HID headlights. Smart key, which is, you don't need that because that you're not going to use. You just hold the key, come to the door, in your pocket, touch the door, open. Awesome. Come on up. Let me show you something else. Now, let's start here. All of this is still the same. You still have your power mirrors with the folding capacity. You still have power windows right through. You still have your central door lock here. Going in, you still have your fog lamp button there. You still have your swivel AC. You still have all of that. You still have this one key, specific key feature. No key in hand. And foot down on the clutch, everything in neutral. Keyless start. Awesome. Now, apart from the keyless start, if you look, now Suzuki Swiss Sport has loaded it up with a lot of gauges. Apart from the regular gauges you get here, you get this here, which is for your VU level. You have one here for your pressure, one here for oil, and one here for water temperature. You also have this here, which is also used for lap time, checking this, checking that, checking now, whatever. On the inside of the car, just like any other car, we're going to look at what it has to offer you. So you get your badging there, you get badging here, but you don't get a lot more badging on the inside. You just get Recaro seats. 
But if you look, you do get something that you didn't get on the coat. Well, there's no more driver airbag, unfortunately. But there is an airbag here, and there are current airbags right around. You also would have had the side airbags. But the side airbags are also gone. Oh boy. So it's safe for the passenger, but the driver, be careful. So, going back to the middle now. No card holder. Still have the sun visors with the mirrors in them, so you still get that. But you don't get much else here. Here, however, you get a proper CD player with everything. You can store, you can do all of that. It's fantastic. Down here, you get automatic AC. Hear that? Chop it off. You get a bigger pocket here. You have the same cup holder thing here, but you don't have as much cup holders as you do in the Colt. You have about three. In the Colt, you had about four. And then you have this now. Look at this. This is a short shifter. Now, a lot of you might notice. When you go into like an old pickup, you go here, you go in first, you actually way down here, so, or somewhere over here, so. But this, that's first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and that's it. It's pretty close shift. I'm not, I'm not even joking. This is, this is supposed to be a nice, fun car to drive. Nice, fun car to drive. But let's look at the practicality of the car. Let's look at the truck. Now, it is a very pretty car, but, I mean, with the practicality, we have to deal with things like legroom. Unlike the cold, it is pretty close. And I mean, even if I was to try and move up the seat, the driver couldn't drive like that. So it's not very spacious in the back. I mean, you can sit, you can make a trip, but it wouldn't be five people. It'd have to be basically four. Um, if you look at this, you can't move the seats forward. You can't move anything back. There's no folding seats. So not a lot of space in it. No, you also lose a lot of space in the trunk. I mean, you get a nice cover here. And you can really hold basically just like one or two small suitcases. But you're not going to hold much. I mean, even when you fold the seats flat, you still don't get a lot of space. And I mean, if you even want to go further, and fold that out the way, even if you fold both sides, you still don't get a lot of space. I mean, you get enough, but I mean, if you look, they have this nice torsion bar in the back for better handling, but it's not very good for the practicality. It's just very good for the sport, especially if you're going up, you know, Mount Russell, taking the corners. It's supposed to be more fun. I don't think you can carry luggage. I think you can carry you, your friends, go to the beach, you carry some basic clothes and some sandals and something, and you're going to be business. But otherwise, from that, I wouldn't pick up grandma in this at all. And then there's the other problem, the fuel. Now, naturally, this would be a 1.6, 125 horsepower, returning about 39.4 miles per gallon, which is not bad. It's still less than the Rallyard Colt, but that's not bad. But this engine has been tuned up from 125 to 160 horsepower. And the torque has moved from 148 up to 176. So that's a lot of movement in engine. And whenever there's movement in engine horsepower, there's decrease in mileage. Now, decrease in mileage is significant, and it could actually go all the way down to probably 35, 34 miles per gallon, which is significant. Because, I mean, at 39 miles per gallon on a full tank, you could only go 375 miles per tank, which is just enough to get around Jamaica. I mean, I, mean, I don't even think you make it back to Kingston. Whereas in the cold, you went right around, you, your friends, the luggage, went right around Jamaica and came back. And the Colt is not a slow car. I mean, the difference in horsepower between this and the Colt is 5 horsepower. The Colt actually has more torque. And this is a lot lighter. This is going to be a little peppier. This is a smaller car. I mean, the Colt is 6 inches longer. Therefore, it has more space overall on the inside and on the outside. But just look at the finish on this. Jesus. You could fit your hand in here. That's ridiculous. And there's two. It's both. You know, with all of these looks, what we need to do now is feel it. So we're going to do now is take a test drive. 